So, should we look at you or at the camera? Well, we can talk, I guess, but you know, when you're explaining things, you might as well explain it to the nice people in the camera. Okay. Hi, people. <laughs> Hi, mom. Hi, dad. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes. Deal. Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast: Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast: Drupal Technology, Community, and Business. module for that there of course there is <laughs> we are at drupal dev days in seged hungary i'm with thomas seidel also known as drunken monkey on drupal.org and nick feinhof nick underscore vh on drupal.org correct correct and these are two of the search gurus in the drupal community and i hear that you guys are having a massive massive code sprint specifically on search this week here in Seged. How's that going? It's going uh, great. Uh, we've had all 14 contributors so far, so um, and made a lot of progress on the Search API AAA part, uh, which is a lot of work, so uh, far from finished yet, but we've really had great progress on many uh, contributors, so it's really going great. From what I've heard, it's the biggest sprint for a contrib module here in Drupal Dev Days. Okay, wow. So let's get a little bit of, a, a little bit of background on you. Uh, Nick, I know that you work at Acquia. Correct, yes. And um, what do you do with, so, with your days? My days, my days are filled uh, with lots of search. So I'm the lead search engineer in Acquia, so I'm responsible for everything Acquia search, uh, which includes the modules as well, and supporting support. Okay, and Acquia search is the product name for the Apache Solar solution that right. Acquia provides it's a uh, hosted solar, uh, host, yes. um, but targeted towards Drupal. Okay. And Thomas, where do you work? What do you do with your days? Well, I'm a freelancer, so um, mostly I just work uh, free time. Uh, I'm paid on the Search API and related modules, but I'm also doing freelance work for um, search on specific sites and uh, developing on Search API and related modules for clients. Uh, so that's about my birthday. Search gun for hire if you need somebody. Definitely, that's the guy. Yeah. Also sponsoring. He needs sponsoring. <laughs> I, I want some know. friend in the issue queue. When did you get started in Drupal? And tell us, please, your first Drupal memory. Um, so I got started in 2007, I think. Uh, at the university, there uh, is, uh, at the same university, there are also um, Fago and Klausi and... Uh, MH86, and they, uh, there we had um, some uh, practice uh, lecture um, where we had to build some open source software and uh, supported project, and they uh, kind of recruited me for their Drupal um, project, and then I ported a private message to Drupal 6 for that project, I think. So that's my first. Okay, so you got started in Drupal 6. Nick, what version of Drupal did you get started with? I started with 4.7. Eight years ago, uh, as a university project where we had to make a community site, and basically we had to tell our teachers if Drupal is like worth it, and our answer was no. <laughs> and um, then I started looking for a job after I finished my bachelor, and the only cool technology that was out there that offered me free travels was a Drupal company, and uh, I loved it. And the first week of my job, I ended up here in Sega. Ah, at the, at the DrupalCon uh, Drupal in 2008, so um, I had a, a blast, and then I learned basically how to do this Drupal thing correctly. Uh-huh. I didn't know you couldn't hack it. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> yes. So apart from learning not to hack core, what, 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 are, the what's, what are some of the highlights of your journey from, from starting here to, to being back here again? Um, it was quite a ride uh, since I started with Crimson and I started to learn how to make websites in a, a co cooperative way, not just you as a student. Um, and then I moved to Barcelona after that and the only way to support my studies was to have a job, which I found in Drupal, in Barcelona and in Portugal. So I found a lot of companies willing to take me as their employee. And then I met Robert Douglas and I asked him if I could 
be an intern in Acquia. And since then, that's two years and a half ago, I am part of the Acquia team. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so Drupal changed. All you code kids out there, if you want to work and travel, Drupal is a great space to do that. It certainly is, yes. What's your favorite thing about Drupal? Um, flexibility, I guess. So that really there are, especially in Drupal 8 now, there are really very, very few places you can't change. And so you can really customize it to your needs. And I really like how, um, how generic you can make your modules and support any use cases out there. So um, that's something I really like about Drupal. And what's the best part for you about being part of the Drupal community? Um, probably that's also the best thing about Drupal for me. So it's, it's not just the technical side. I love the community. That's also why I love coming to these events. Certainly in Europe, because I started in Europe, I know so many people. Good friends, I made a lot of friends. Um, so it's, it's just amazing. Um, I love how <clears throat> the community always tries to get together in person so that, and, and the fact that we know each other, you know, the fact that we've dealt with each other eye to eye, that we've talked, mm -hmm. makes it much easier to collaborate than remotely. You, I think um, Drupal is a very human open source project and people remember to be respectful and I think that comes from meeting people, right? And then even if there's somebody new who you haven't met in person yet, you still remember all the people you interact with, right? right. Thomas, talk, talk about being an open source software developer. Um, well, it's of course interesting because you can just, uh, yeah, you can just uh, take other people's examples and learn a lot from others because, um, yeah, you have all these clever other people working on their own stuff, which might be similar to yours. And it's also um, a great, a great um, thought, I think, that when you work on something, there's uh, tens of thousands of people that will then, or maybe will use it, mm -hmm. and you're really helping a lot of people, even if you're doing paid work and just um, publishing your results then, and this bit of paid work will help, uh, potentially help lots of other people and maybe also spark interest for other developers and they create something new. It really is a very, very creative uh, yeah. community or um, thought. What I like a lot about it is that it comes a lot with attribution. So things you do are out there. It has your name, but also other people's like, they can contribute, their name will add there. And it's a kind of a curriculum for you to move on to other companies or is the stuff you do within a company doesn't stay in that company and then when you get out of there or move on uh-huh you keep that so you're uh, you, the the commits that you've made are um, out in the open of course right. and it's a record of your expertise and your learning and your knowledge and right. the things that you've done it's sort of you don't even have to write a resume maybe if you uh, depends on the job but yes I mean I, if I wasn't able to do that I would every time be needing to prove what I was doing, uh, what I was able to do, but now we could show the profile, um, see all the things you helped with. What are you both most excited about for Drupal 8? Uh, so I'm uh, very excited about the new Search API module in Drupal 8. We've really um, had a lot of um, improvements, uh, have a lot of improvements planned and uh, bugs that are inherent in Drupal 7 to be uh, fixed in Drupal 8, a lot of new flexibility and possibilities. For example, we'll probably make um, indexes have multiple item types. You can easily make a whole site search, which was very hard to do previously. Yes. And this is really, a, there are really very many great improvements that uh, will come in with the search API in Drupal 8. And of course, one uh, other great, um, great new uh, improvement is that well, there were two, two um, solar modules in Triple Seven, so now will be <laughs> a huge combined effort uh, in Triple Eight, which will also, uh, I think, benefit everyone. Yeah. Okay, so Nick, just tell us the situation that we're coming from with the with the competing search solutions in Triple Seven and um, what we're going to get out of search in Triple Eight. So in Triple Six, um, it started in Triple Five. It's Search API didn't exist for Triple. Five nor six, I guess. Yeah, there was the Apache Solar module, um, which was a direct integration from Drupal to Solar, 
Um, and then in Drupal 7, there was this new module called Search API, which made it like an intermediary to use different backends. And the two modules were offering very similar experience, so, but with a very different technical point of view. Okay, so search is a really interesting space, and the kind of things that we're looking for are faceted search, right. drill down search, search based on geolocation information, right. indexing different of attached documents, types, external indexes, plus um, authors, plus publishing dates, plus everything right. that you can imagine that you would see on a on a big site that would let you slice and dice through the stuff that's and already speed. there. And speed. I mean, it needs to be quick. Your search needs to be resolving quick. Um, so. I think a year ago, Thomas and I sat together, or maybe longer ago, to combine already the solar schemas, so the config files for solar. And from there, we, we started to grow into a direction where we saw, okay, we're doing a lot of really similar things. It would be nice for Drupal 8 to maybe combine forces. Um, so there was a blog post that was written about the reasons and what we're trying to do. And this week, we're actually doing it. We're actually working together on search API, not on solar yet. Um, that's when the base module is finished. Um, but it's very exciting, but one solution. The solar solution is then just plugged into search API in the end. Yes. And you could plug in any other search backend in the future. Yes, like Elasticsearch or right. whatever people want to use. So this actually comes back to the open source ideal of not reinventing the wheel, of, of, of combining forces and writing right. one thing um, better than two different things that you have to waste energy so on. So we're taking the best of the two worlds and we're trying to merge that into one really, really nice solution for Drupal 8 to make Drupal 8 the best. Uh, so right. how is that going to benefit uh, clients and site owners going forward? Well, they don't have to decide anymore between two competing solutions when they have when really a lot of people ask the question, so which should I use? And it's really hard to say yeah. because both have advantages, both have disadvantages. When Drupal 8, there will ju just be one module which hopefully can do it all. You can just use that. There will be a lot of people um, who were either a better solar or surgery bad guys in Drupal yeah. 7 now have the, you, then you have a much broader base of expertise because people will just know this one solar module. Unified documentation. Exactly, the documentation, all efforts don't have to be du duplicated anymore, so there's a lot more energy to go into just making it better. Great. And guiding them towards correct approaches or correct ways to configure for right. their needs. Because you've got a single set of best practices to define. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. How do you feel about Drupal 8 uniting so many open source projects and communities? Like Symphony? Like Symphony, like Guzzle, like Aesthetic, like all these different tools that we're bringing in. And I like it a lot because in, in Acquia I also have projects, internal projects, that is already doing this for Drupal 7. So I'm already familiar with Guzzle and some other composer ways of binding everything together. And it's really exciting. And it also allows people to come in with the projects. So I think, for example, for Solar, for Search API, we will no longer write our own connection classes, but use a library, perhaps. I mean, we haven't discussed or haven't decided anything they yet. They still need to fight about this. <laughs> but I mean, it would it's make fine. sense. It would make sense because Composer support is in Drupal 8. Yeah. Um, and there's a bunch of really nice libraries out there for a bunch of different connectors. Um, and I mean, if we can offload some work to other people right. that have more expertise, maybe, and bring that in, I think it makes total sense. It really comes down to what you said about not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. Because why should you write your own connection class, your own uh, HTTP handler, if everything is already provided in the and HTTP world yeah. in a very, very in a advanced way? You don't have to implement everything for Drupal again. Sure. No, absolutely. Thank you so much <laughs> yes. for taking the My time pleasure. to talk with me, guys. It's great Thank to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, what word best describes Drupal? Blue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right.
right. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite Drupal superpower? Um, being able to understand views. <laughs>